Hi, this is Lee Garrett, and welcome to another edition of Screencast Online. I've been doing a few shows recently where we've been touching a lot more on keyboard shortcuts. I'm using my devices now more than ever because I'm spending so much less time traveling and on client sites. So I want to do things quicker, and I love it when I find tools that allow me to do that. And Keysmith from Otto Labs is one such application. It recognizes there are lots of apps out there that have keyboard shortcuts. But what about shortcuts for sequences of events, like a number of shortcuts that are grouped together, or a sequence of button presses on a website? Keysmith will allow you to record a series of actions as macros and then play them back using a keyboard shortcut or from a menu bar icon, even an inline search tool. It's a great application. Let's take a look. Firstly, as normal, I'd like to cover off the price. Now, Keysmith is available from two locations. So firstly, it can be downloaded directly from the developer's site. And I'm here now in the purchase section. And there is a free tier as well as a paid license that you can buy. Now, the free tier has the full functionality that the paid tier has. It just limits you to five macros. And for some of you, to be fair, that may be enough. If you can find five repetitive actions that you can simplify, it's a no-brainer. Also, it is a generous amount for you to just try the application out and see if it's for you. The paid license is $34 and gives you an unlimited number of macros. Now, as I scroll down, you'll see that it's also available through Setup, which is the version that I'm gonna be launching shortly. And then below that still, there is also a Teams plan, which costs $5 per seat per month or $50 if you're paying annually. Let's kick the app off though. I'll just close Safari here. And I've already launched Keysmith here to run for the first time. So this is the welcome window. I'll click continue. And straight away, it's recommended that we install some browser extensions. Now, we'll cover off how well Keysmith works in a browser later on in the video. But I will install at least one of these sets of extensions now. So Keysmith has native support for Chrome and Firefox. And because the majority of you I know will use Chrome over Firefox, I'll install those. As I click install, in typical Google fashion, the whole world opens up on my screen. I'm asked if I want to use it as my default browser. No thanks. I'll just uncheck both of these. And then I'll click start Google Chrome, which of course launches a new window that I don't want. So let's close that. And I'll click the add to Chrome button to add this Chrome extension. It asks for permissions, which I'll grant. And let's just tidy up this screen now. I'll hold Command and Q to quit Chrome there. Now I'll just come up here and turn off these Google Chrome notifications. I don't really like them. They're never, never very useful to me. OK, that's done. Now, as well as Chrome extensions, you can do the same for Firefox here if you have Firefox installed, of course. I'm going to click Skip now, though, to move to the next screen. And it asks if I'm sure that I want to skip, despite me adding the Chrome extension already. It's OK. I know it's going to work because I'll show you it in action later. So I'll click Continue. And if you want to watch a brief video on how to use Keysmith, you can play this here. But hopefully you shouldn't need that after this one that you're watching. So I'll press Continue again. Now we need to grant access to the accessibility settings in macOS for Keysmith. So I'll click Open Security and Privacy, and then Open System Preferences. Then click the padlock to unlock and make changes. And as I'm on my MacBook Pro here, I'll just use Touch ID instead of my password. And I'll scroll over here to find Keysmith. There it is. I'll just check and close this window. And we can see Keysmith has detected that I've made that setting change. So I'll click continue once more. And we're ready to open Keysmith. Now there's a checkbox to launch at login automatically, which I'll leave checked and I'll click open Keysmith. And now we're presented with the Keysmith interface and for such a powerful application and such a useful application, it's a really surprisingly simple and minimal interface that we have. On the left-hand side, we will have our list of macros in this sidebar. Then on the right in the main window, we'll see the details of any macros that we have selected. And along the top, the name of the macro that we have and a hotkey for launching it, as well as some buttons to record or run a new or existing macro. It's really very simple. That's just a quick preview of one of this week's Apple related tutorials from Screencasts Online. Screencasts Online is your premium source of Apple related video tutorials. All of our members get access to brand new up to date tutorials each week. 
as well as unlimited access to our entire video archive full of Mac and iOS related tutorials. You can stream and download all of our videos on your Mac, iPad and iPhone and even your Apple TV using the members only Screencasts Online Apple TV app. Membership also includes a complimentary subscription to the Digital Screencasts Online monthly magazine, published each month and packed with videos, articles, reviews as well as hints and tips covering all aspects of the Mac, iPad, iPhone and all of the other fantastic Apple products. So, if you're ready to start getting the most out of your Apple devices, visit ScreencastsOnline.com today and become a ScreencastsOnline member.